In this lesson, we're going to continue our project that we created with a mellow music and some beautiful sceneries. But this time, we're going to bring all the audio tracks together using the audio mixer. By the end of this lesson, you will have yourself a nice cinematic video with the right audio design. Now, with audio design, you're supposed to set a mood for your audience, whether it's sad, it's happy, you want to make sure you're choosing the right music, right sound effect, and just the right audio for what is being displayed on screen. In the previous lesson, we learned how to use keyframes, audio keyframes, I learned how we can change the volume throughout an audio using keyframes. So this one right here, the birds chirping, we have one, two, three keyframes right here. There's a fourth one here as well. The reason why we did this was that uh, in the first half, the birds were really quiet and we couldn't really hear them. But in the second half, they started to get louder. So instead of turning up the uh, volume for the whole clip, I used keyframes to adjust the audio. So right here, from keyframe B, because this was A, from keyframe B to C, it's getting louder. Let's bring our playhead here. This was zero decibels, but then over here, it became 7.5. So this part of my audio gradually grew louder. And then from 7.5, we lowered the audio to zero decibels again. So this was zero, and then over here, we just increased the audio and then left it as it was. We did this using keyframes. Let's hit OK and move on to the audio mixer tool. As the name suggests, audio mixer allows you to mix different types of audios. And because they're all in one place, it's easier to work with. So instead of going and double clicking on each one to adjust the audio, I can just use the audio mixer because let's say I have maybe 10 audio tracks. It's kind of difficult to go on each one and then like scroll down to get the others done as well. So that's where the audio mixer comes in handy. I got this sound effect, the seagull sound effect, because we said that over here, these, the birds that were in this audio were not suitable seagulls would be better, hence the seagull sound effect. And right over here, uh, because it's slow motion, you can't really add an audio. Because if you slow down a water splash audio, it's going to sound very distorted. So everything else has a sound effect except for this video. I also used keyframes to adjust the levels right here. Like so. Let's play this back. <laughs> we go. One thing you could do right over here, you can see how the audio suddenly cuts off. This was a bit uh, choppy, so let's just do something right here. I'm going to bring this back to zero. Let's increase the length and do the same thing for the top audio track. So we get something like this. The bird audio needs to start playing before this comes on screen. And the seagulls video needs to fade out while the bird video is here. So right over here, I can start uh, fading out my audio. Let me delete the keyframes, select them, and then hit backspace on your keyboard. There we go. Let's double click on the seagulls and fade it out. Let's give this a listen. Now you can see it's a lot more smooth compared to what it was. When you're working with these types of sound effects, you want to make sure that you overlay them together when you're transitioning from video A to video B. 
You don't want there to be a sudden cut because it will be very noticeable for your audience. All right, now our audios are ready to go. We can do the same thing right here. So we're going to introduce this wave audio right over here as well. So we're slowly entering the final video. Do the same thing right here. Fade it out like so before this video starts. Let's play this back. There we go. That's a lot better. Let's take a look at the waves here and see whether we have the right positioning. I'm going to just increase it here. I'm going to use a marker to mark the parts where this second wave lands on the shore, right around here. Hit M and then split this audio like so. Get rid of this. can bring the playhead at the part where it needs to uh, form this second wave. There we go. Now, because the first wave was a lot more stronger than the second wave, you can just lower the audio for the second wave. And there we go. Because we have the music playing, you can't really tell there's a cut here. So you don't need to fade out the areas over here. So now my music is ready to go, my bass. And I'm just going to fade out my audio here so that I could end my video right here. Now let's head over to the audio mixer button, which is right over here. Click it once and you are introduced to many bars that we saw right over here. This one. Instead of one, we have uh, many because we have five audio tracks and one video track, but because we don't really have audio on our video, we will not be using this. So let's move it here where we can see our five audio tracks. Now, similar to this, you can adjust the audio for each of the tracks, but the good thing about this is that it's all in the same place. So not only can you adjust the audio for each of these tracks, but you could also compare and then adjust it later if you'd like. So you don't need to scroll up and down to change the volume and then listen back, do it again. You can just do it right here because we can also play the music with this button. So I don't really need to go back here. Just like the bar over here, you can drag the sliders for each of these audio tracks. Make them lower or louder. Type in a number that you'd like, put zero. Switch between the right speaker or the left speaker. Remember that, uh, let's type in zero. When you're playing your audio, this bar is the right speaker. This is the left speaker. So if you'd like one of the tracks to only show up from the right side of the speaker, then you would switch it to the right. Positive numbers are the right side, negative numbers are the left side. Hit zero. If I want to adjust the volume of all of my tracks at the same time, I can use the master volume right here, which works with everything that's on your project, regardless of whether it's a sound effect, a music, or a video. You can just use this to either uh, decrease the audio, or increase it. And there we go. So this is pretty easy to work with. You would just have to see what's your priority in this composition, which for me is the music. So everything else other than the music needs to be worked with so that I'm getting the right amount of sound effects at the appropriate time. This right here allows me to bring my audios from different parts of the speaker. So we heard that we have left and right, but we have two options here. Let's go to stereo first. We have this line right here. It's rather hard to see, but basically anything on the right side of this line means the right speaker. 
Anything on the left means the left. If it's at the center, it means that it's coming out equally. Let's see what happens when I drag these here. You can see that this guy moved to the right just by simply dragging this to the right. So let's drag this right here and just experiment. We have another audio track, which is the fourth audio track. I can choose a location. Let's put it to the left. Got another one for audio track three, two, and then one. I'm going to leave the video as it is because there's no audio on it. Now let's see what happens. <laughs> So what's happening right here is that some of the audio tracks are only playing from the right side or mostly playing from the right side. This way I can create a high dimension audio, meaning that instead of one output, I can make it come from the left and the right or make it surround my uh, audience, which we'll learn how to do. But let's attempt to move everything to the right, all the way to the right, like so. So everything is almost at 100. Let's see what happens. So notice how the right bar was higher than the left. That's because we moved everything to the right speaker. If you move it all to the left, it will be just the same. Just type in negative 100 here. There we go. Let's give it a listen. Now it's coming from the left. You can use this area right here to change the output of your audio. Let's head over to the second option, which is surround. So with stereo, we only had a straight line, meaning that you could either go to the right or to the left. But with surround, you're going in a circle, meaning that you can just go around like this and distribute your audio evenly. Let's play this back. So you can see the bars are not equal, but if someone were to wear headphones, they would experience a high dimension experience, meaning that it's as if this all of these audio tracks are surrounding him and he's basically at the center of the circle. So if you ever went to YouTube and searched for 8D audio or 3D audio, this is exactly what they do. They take that song, break it into parts like vocals, guitar, violin, and all that, and they play it in a way that it's surrounding you as the listener. If you want to create a high dimension audio effect, you could come over here and experiment to see which audio tracks work best on the right and which ones work best on the left. So I can create an 8D effect like so. So go ahead and test this out, play with it and see what gives you the best result. Now let's hit OK and finish up our video. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I will start with some transitions, fade at the beginning and at the end. I'm going to increase the transition here so it slowly moves out. I will not be placing any transitions in between the videos because like we said in a previous lesson, Transitions can change the mood of your video. If I want something chill and uh, mellow like what I have here, I should not be using uh, transitions like orb. See what happens. So we got this epic transition, but we have a really slow music and a really chill video. So this will not work for me and it interrupts the mood that the audience is getting from this video. So you want to choose transitions that go well with the mood of your video. If you have an epic video where there's like sports or race cars, then you can go ahead and use the transitions that have a lot of animations. I will stick with these two transitions. Now we can go ahead and finish this up with some color grading. Let's double click color. And I'm just going to work with the tone a bit. Add to the saturation, 
Let's decrease the brightness. Add warmth to my video and bring the tint towards the left a little bit so we can cancel the purple. You can add a 3D LUT if you'd like. I think I'll stick with this. Let's do the same thing on the other uh, videos. There we go. Increase the contrast if needed. And just work with the sliders as you'd like. I'm choosing this 3D LUT because I like how it works with the colors. You can see how the color right here is a bit cyan. You can also add filters if you'd like or anything else that we have learned so far in the lesson. You could add cinematic bars if you'd like. I think I'll do that. Let's head over to my media, sample color and get the color black. Place it on top. Increase the length. Double click on your black color. Head over to video, mask, and we're just going to, we're going to choose rectangle. Invert your mask so you get something like this. And we just want to increase and work with the horizontal vertical sliders until we get a cinematic bar. Let's add to the vertical and look at the guides here to make sure that your video is, your mask is at the center. Once you're finished, hit OK. And now I have a cinematic bar. Now let's play this back. <laughs> And there we have it. We created this cinematic video using all the techniques that we have learned so far and balanced all of the audio tracks using the audio mixer. You can go ahead and continue this video to the end of your music, but I'm going to leave mine right here. Now that we know how we can work with multiple audio tracks at the same time, it's now time to learn about Filmora's other audio tools. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.